we will actually we will actually look into transform domain filtering okay and uh, the thing to remember is that transform domain filtering okay which means that instead of operating in the spatial domain right you're going to operate in the transform domain and transform domain you know, typically you know means some kind of a unitary transform that you would want to apply and, and go to a transform domain and uh, but then right, this is not very common okay simply because of the fact that spatial domain filters right give you so much flexibility for example the nlm right, does not have a Fourier counterpart okay so so spatial filters are much more adaptive they are much more much more easy to uh, right i mean you know they, they, they're much more let's say effective right and uh, and uh, right which is which is the reason why transform domain filtering is not really all that common but then for some kinds of noise for example periodic noise and all right this is very useful and the way right and we call it generalized linear filtering right because because of the fact that uh, fact that right we call it generalized linear filtering okay because transform domain domain filtering operations are you know typically done using a unitary transform and uh, and it's a, it's a kind of a point point wise operation okay it's a point wise operation why because of the following reason right so the transform domain looks like this so you so you have an image let's say u of m comma n okay then what do you do you compute a unitary transform you, you kind of apply a unitary transform on this let's call this ut or okay let's just write it down so you act some unitary transform on it depending upon the situation typically this will be a dft Okay, if you do that, then you have A U A transpose, right? We know that we need to do A U A transpose where let's say A could be A would be the unitary transform corresponding to the corresponding to 1D, right? And therefore, in order to get a get a 2D unitary transform of U, we'll do A U A transpose. That let's say gives you transform coefficients B K L. Now what you do is you do a point operation now. That's why that's why it was written as point operation, where you use some kind of what is called a zonal mask. Right, so this zonal mask is something that will do a point-wise multiplication. Let's call this as G. Okay, let's call this as the zonal mask. So it's like a point-wise operation in the in the in the kind of transform domain. Right. So for example, if you if you had a, if you had a Fourier, uh, if if A was a Fourier transform, then what it would mean is your zonal mask. Now we know that your VKL. Suppose we assume it to be a centered spectrum. We know that the low frequencies are all here and the high frequencies are 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 away from here. And what you could do is you could have a zonal mask, right, which might actually, right, which might, which might actually, you know, attenuate the higher frequencies and and simply let the lower frequencies pass and so on, right. So accordingly, okay, uh, okay, you could have a filter here, okay, which is called, which is a zonal mask, which will do a point-wise multiplication operation here. And this point-wise multiplication operation will change your VKL, right, which is here, and this is your G. So once you multiply G with VKL in a point-wise manner. You end up getting what is called a, what is called v tilde k l, right? You have you have uh, your transform coefficients have now been now been changed, right? Some have been attenuated and some have been passed and so on. And this will then be right inverse transformed, right? So you do and do an you know, inverse transform operation, inverse inverse transform, which will mean that you do a Hermitian v a star, right? This way also v tilde a star, right? Because this will be done on v tilde, and out comes u tilde m comma n, right? Which is now back in the back in the original intensity domain. Okay, so u tilde m n has now been transformed, right? Um, and so this transform domain filtering, okay, it is not uh, okay. It is it is not as effective as the spatial uh, spatial domain filters because spatial domain filters, right, are more accommodative. I mean, you can also you can also do a transform domain such as such as SVD filtering. It's also possible to do SVD using the SVD. Also, right, you can do some kind of filtering, which is which also comes under the comes under uh, comes under transform domain filtering. So, what this will mean is, if you had S equal to some A sigma B Hermitian, and uh, now this, let's say, we could write it down as sigma I A I B I Hermitian, right? Let me like we did before, and suppose it has R singular vector singular values which are uh, which are non-zero, then we go all the way up to I equal to one to R in order to reconstruct S exactly. What we could do is, in order to filter S, we could create an S hat, which we need to sum only from sigma i a i b i Hermitian, where we can restrict okay, this summation to i is equal to one to p, where let's say p is p is less than r. Okay, so you kind of ignore the higher singular values, believing that those probably contain noisy basis basis emitters, and therefore that you don't want to you don't want to take contributions from there and simply limit the contribution that uh, that. That helps you arrive at s hat to to the summation from i equal to one to p. Okay, so so SVD can also be used for used for noise filtering. Not very commonly done, but yes, you know, because we are talking about transform domain, right? This is also one way to one way to do it. So it doesn't have to be necessarily Fourier or something. And one way, uh, one uh, one important right application of uh, let's say the Fourier kind of filter is in is in terms of notch filtering. 
right and uh, and especially okay noise filtering for let's say periodic noise okay uh, now if you if you can kind of recollect right right in the right in the start of uh, noise filtering i mentioned that that you can have a 50 hertz kind of right, periodic noise because of electromagnetic right interference and so on and and such a noise right is very easy to is very convenient to filter using fourier domain because because it would appear as a spike in the fourier domain at exactly those those that that frequency and therefore if you simply suppress that and reconstruct the image right, you would have you would have eliminated eliminated the noise so that way right for certain kinds of noise i mean doing it in the spatial domain is not going to be easy at all right whereas doing it in the in the in the transform domain makes up makes a lot more sense right if one were to one were to kind of see do this okay and uh, uh, and and therefore even though transform domain is not very common but then it doesn't mean that it is not used or something so there are situations where transform domain filtering can turn out to be very useful here are some transform based filtering examples okay we have seen already as to how to do it right we call this generalized linear filtering and uh, right i just wanted to show you a few examples under this uh so this is all okay now the first one is is a low pass filtering in the fourier domain you have an image and then the second one is the image added with noise this is a gaussian noise and then right when you do a low pass filtering in the fourier domain right, you would get something like this you can see that the noise level is kind of come down in the in the output but then uh, there is also a concern that the image has become a little blurred okay this is natural to expect okay but is the reason why i said that spatial the spatial filtering techniques such as nlm and bilateral filter and all are 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 at far more effective right but in but in any case right one should know as to how these algorithms perform then okay right look at this notch filter i mean here you find that you know doing a fourier kind of filtering actually makes a lot of sense so here is the image and then but then when you add noise a single tone noise right what you get is you know, there's this kind of a regular pattern all over the image now removing this kind of noise using spatial domain filtering right would not be right but no would would not appear to be very straightforward whereas right doing it in the, in the fourier domain makes a lot of sense because we know that this is a single tone it will appear as some spike in the fourier domain and if you know the frequency at which right is occurring because it's typically some electromagnetic interference then what you could do is you could just go to the fourier domain and you just suppress that that uh, that particular frequency along with it of course if the image also has some component there that will also get suppressed but that is okay right after you reconstruct you get you get back the, the get back get the you know get the filtered output okay and now you can also do what is called a sweedy based filtering of noise so here is a cameraman image which is a standard image okay and that and uh, no and it has been affected by noise we've added noise to it now again transform domain filtering like i said it does not have to be always fourier based you can also do some like a sweedy filtering so so what you do is you just take let's say a few of these singular singular vectors don't take all of them so when you when you just take uh, let's say you know in this case it's a uh, it's a uh, 30 top uh, singular vectors that have been taken in order to do in order to reconstruct this image you see that see that you know it has been able to you know mitigate the level of noise a little bit but then you know it's 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 uh, it's, it's not great right that this result right you know is not so great but uh, you know, just helps to know that the uh, right svd okay which we did earlier for for other applications it also finds application right you know for let's say filtering for filtering noise